Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 379. Yes, this is a class. <laughs> yes, it is long, but it is commercial free. So <laughs> if you are unable to get out to your local crafty store because they don't have classes right now, then join me for a, anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours on an actual class where you not only see the latest and greatest, but you learn about products you might already own and what they can do for you that you didn't know they could. So I'm excited to bring you today's class because I've got just that. I've got a little bit of old mixed in with a little bit of new and and for those of you who are not comfortable with all the different types of inks out there, we are going to talk about the CDPs of inks and kind of go over that just as a general. I'm going to start with that because I have to assume that there are new people out there coming to the crafting world who have no idea why there's so many different inks on the market and what they do and how they do them and why do they need them or do they even need them. So I'm probably going to start there in this class, but I have got beautiful products from Keep It Cool Kevin at Aladine. He's over in France. Well, actually, Kevin's in the UK. Fred, who owns Aladine, and Aladine is located in France. And then I've got brand new product from Couture Creations, Aussie Andrew. He's over in Australia. So we've got Australia represented. We've got France represented. We've got Stampendous, who is here in sunny California, represented. The funny thing is, the crazy thing is, is that even though Ozzy Andrew is in Australia and Aladdin is in France and Kevin actually telecommutes and works in the UK, Andrew and Kevin are like good friends. <laughs> it's such a small community. So I've got beautiful products from both of them. And then I threw in some of my older product because it went with the, the theme of what we're doing today. And unfortunately, Ozzy Andrew couldn't get everything here with everything that's going on. So I found some of my older things that are going to work well with this collection from Ozzy Andrew and Couture Creations. And I put it mine on a super deep discount. Wahoo could shoot. Now, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I want to talk to you about that because we always have two winners. And then I think we're going to tilt down and get started because there just is so much to do. Oh, and then my mom. My mom, okay. Well, I had said that I have a story about my mom, and I do, and I'll do it super quick so we can get through and get on. And it's not a sad story. So Colette, you don't have to bring out the tissues. I just, I, I'm just not sure what to do, but <laughs> well, we'll see. So my mom passed away a few years ago, and most of you who have been with me for a long time have been with me through both of my parents passing. And, um, and of course, after my mom passed away, we had to go through her drawers. Not that I didn't already know what were in, in her drawers, but anyway, her like her nightstand, I didn't keep tabs on what she put in there. And when we were going through all of that, there were these little keys in that drawer, little tiny keys, gold, weird shaped, had no idea what they were for. It wasn't like, I thought maybe a jewelry box or, but I, she didn't have a jewelry box. I just, I couldn't imagine what they were for. They were obviously not for a front door or a car or even a padlock. Didn't know. So me, I chucked them. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> now, years later, I get a call from Chase Bank, who is at the, they're, they're, the bank is right by where I live and that's where we bank too. And I get a call from Chase Bank saying that they need payment on my mom's safety deposit box. My mom's what? My mom's safety deposit box. My mom had a safety deposit box. Yes, and we need payment on it. <laughs> oh, huh. So I went into the bank and I, and, they, and, and, and I said, well, how are we gonna get into the safety deposit box? And they said, well, you have the keys. And I said, no. What keys? And then they showed me these gold little keys that don't go to a car and don't go to a front door. What do they go to? A safety deposit box. The keys that I chucked years ago, 
Oh my gosh. And then you also have to have this letter of testimony, I think is what they called it from the state, because now we're going to have to break into her safety deposit box. They'll have to call a locksmith out and they'll drill into the box so we can get into it. Who knew my mom had a safety deposit box? Do you think she ever mentioned ever that she had a safety deposit box? So my thought is, and this is just me, is that my mom went in to open an account and she had been with Chase Bank before it was even Chase Bank. I think it was Security Pacific at one time and then Gray Western, I don't know. It went through many names and finally ended up Chase. I think she went in and she opened an account and they said, Miss Brown, congratulations and thank you for opening an account with our bank. Would you like the toaster or would you like the, uh, the blender or would you like the safety deposit box as your free gift? Because <laughs> that's how long she's had an account there. I am positive. Well, I'm not positive. I think that she got it as part of opening a new account instead of the toaster or the blender or the whatever they were giving away at the time. And then it just sat there. Who knew? So I have to go and have the safety deposit box open. I come into the store and I'm talking to SMS girl Sarah about it. And Sarah's like, what? It's a mystery. Oh my gosh, this is exciting, Stacy. It's who knows what you're gonna find. It's 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 a mystery. And she's like all excited and animated and everything. And I'm like, Sarah, it's probably empty. She's like, no, no, let's not think that way. Who knows what can be in there? Let's think of all the possibilities. And I'm like, oh, Sarah. <laughs> but she's having a great time. And I looked at her and I go, did you not ever watch Geraldo Rivera? Geraldo Rivera did a, a thing, a special, the opening of, of Al Capone's vault. I think it was Al Capone. And what was going to be behind when they opened the vault doors? I mean, it was this huge publicity, every marketing everywhere on TV. And I think everybody and their mother turned in when Geraldo Rivera busted through and cranked the door open and opened it up and what was it? Empty. <laughs> empty. <laughs> so I'm like, Sarah, it's probably empty. She's like, oh no, we're gonna, this is exciting. I can't, can I go? <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, huh, she never mentioned she had a safety deposit box. I wonder what is in there. <laughs> Could she have had a winning lottery ticket and I didn't know about it? <laughs> oh my gosh, that might be a little upsetting, but oh well, it was never mine to begin with. If I never had it, I never really lost it. That's the way I look at things. <laughs> so we're just going to have to wait and see. I have to get this letter of testimony from the state and then take it over to the bank and then they'll get set up a time for us to drill through. And I'll let you know what we find, but I think for today on this YouTube, when you post your comment, because you have to post a comment for a chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, I think you have to tell me what you think is in my mom's safety deposit box that she's had for years and years and years. For all I know, she could have my baby teeth in there and a little swatch of my baby hair. Who knows what she put in there? And again, I think she took that over the toaster. So I am stating here that I think the box is going to be empty. You need to tell me what you think is going to be in my mom's safety deposit box that probably has cobwebs growing in it by now. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe my mom. Couldn't she have just said something at some point, any time in her life? By the way, I have a safety deposit box. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay, so when you post your comment on this YouTube, because you have to post for a chance to be a winner winner. Tell me what you think is in that box. Do you think we're going to find a million dollars? If we find a million dollars, I will let you know. There's not going to be a million dollars. Do you think we're going to find maybe a piece of jewelry or something from my grandma's estate or my, I, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be empty? Do you think there's going to be a note in there that says, ha ha ha? That would be my dad, not my mom. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> that would have been my father's humor. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Already spent it. <laughs> that would be my dad's humor, not my
my mom's. <laughs> but it's funny. Okay, so now we have winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. And these are people who posted on the last YouTube 378. <laughs> And congratulations, you've won a $25 gift card to Scrapbooking Made Simple. How do you claim your prize? You don't have to do anything. I actually know both of these people. Like, I don't know them. Like, we've never met, met, but we've met. <laughs> and I know they both have online accounts and your $25 is already in there. Are you ready? Okay, our first winner winner is Jerry Ann Brown. Hello, Jerry Ann, is that you? Congratulations, because if it is, you're a winner winner chicken dinner. Wahoo, ka -choo. And our next winner winner is Bella. Bell, Bell Norton. Hello, Bell. How are you doing? Congratulations. You too have become a winner winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Both of you are receiving a $25 gift card to spend on anything that makes your heart happy. <laughs> And, well, anything that makes your heart happy, add scrapbooking made simple. <laughs> buy something that you would never, never buy for yourself. Buy, buy something that is frivolous. That's the best kind of purchase. And since it's on me, congratulations. Now, if you want a chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, what do you have to do? Again, your post this week, and I never usually tell you what you need to post about, but this time I am. What do you think is in my mom's safety deposit box? You tell me what you think's in there and I'll let you know. Probably be a couple weeks before, at least a couple weeks, because we've got to get some paperwork from the state. But as soon as I know, you will know. And then of course we have to do our winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, catch you for you. All right, girls, congratulations. Everybody else post your comments. I am gonna get started for today. We're gonna tilt down. I have got a lot to show you. So if you're still with me, thanks for still staying with me. And if you've already clicked me off, well, we miss you. I'm never gonna get to 100,000 subscribers if I keep going with two hour YouTubes. Not ever, but, <laughs> but God loves a trier. <laughs> All right, <laughs> down I go. <laughs> Let me zoom on in because we are so not tech savvy here. No overhead cameras or lighting or, even people to <laughs> to run the cameras. It's just me and you, <laughs> like home movies. <laughs> okay, I just I feel like I'm a little off. Let me see if that's any better. All right, here we go. What do we think? Look at how cute this sample is. This is using paper from Ozzy Andrew. It's using ephemera from Ozzy Andrew. It's using inks from Aladdin would die from Ozzy Andrew. It's using glitter in there from Stampendous. The inks are from Aladdin. I said the, I hope I said the inks were from Aladdin. Now I don't remember what I said, but it's gonna be fine. And then the, the dye here is a simply defined, an older one. So really pretty, right? We've got Ozzy Andrew from Couture Creations. Keep it cool, Kevin from Aladdin. We've got Peggy over at Stampendous and Simply Defined, all represented in this beautiful sample. But then we also have this beautiful sample. And again, this paper is from Couture Creations. The ephemera is from Couture Creations. The inks are from Aladdin. The glitters are from Stampendous, and that is one of my products. This the dye is one of mine. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the CDPs of ink, and I might have to back up just a little bit. Let me back up. Nope, that's the wrong directions, DC. Try again. Okay, so we're gonna be talking CDPs. Gosh, I just cannot get my camera straight. CDPs of ink, what are the CDPs of ink? Well, let's just cut me off a little piece. You have got if you know your A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, all the way down to Z. If you can remember your alphabet, you will remember what ink is what. First ink, or the first ink out there starts with a C. And it is a chalk-based ink. So 
a chalk-based ink starts with C. Chalk-based inks are normally color box. They had the largest collection of chalk-based inks and now they're out of business. So chalk-based inks are, I know Quick Quotes has some. Usually chalk-based inks dry the fastest. They are very, very quick to dry. They are also the closest to the letter A, which is the beginning of the alphabet. A, B, C. The closer you are to the beginning of the alphabet, the faster your ink dries. The next type of ink after chalk would be D. Dye-based ink. See how close D is to C? They're right next door to each other. So a dye-based ink dries almost as fast as a chalk-based ink. Really fast. It's also very, very close to the letter A. So you have chalk, you have dye, which dry quickly, chalk a little faster than dye-based, and then we go all the way down to P. P P is a pigment-based ink. And look at how far P is from the letter A. Look at how far P is from the letter D. Big difference all the way down the line of alphabet. P, pigment-based ink, takes a whole lot longer to dry. It is not dry like that, like a chalk or a dye. These are right up here next to A. You gotta go all the way down the alphabet before you get to P. So you have to know when you use a pigment-based ink, it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry. So if you know your ABCs, you can remember C, D, P. Chalk, dye, pigment. That's how you remember the drying time of ink. Chalk fast, dye fa almost as fast, pigment a way long away. Today we're going to be playing with pigment-based ink and there is a reason why you play with pigment-based ink over a chalk or a dye-based ink. Now let's show you about that. So I'm going to bring over a piece of white paper and I have got some mementos. Let's just do That's a Hero Arts Cube. Here's a Memento. Here's a Hero Ombre. These are all dye-based inks. All of these are dye-based inks, which means they are meant to absorb into paper. Remember, dye-based inks, is D is close to A, so they're going to dry. Quick, look at that, done. Why? Because it's absorbed into the paper. So when you're playing with, let's say, some of your Tim Holtz inks, your Distress inks, um, or your mementos, or your Stampin' Ups, or some of your Hero Arts inks. They are a dye-based ink. And look at how quickly they absorb into your paper. Dye-based ink is the most common ink on the market. It is what most of you own, or at least own the majority of, because we use it for stamping all the time. You'll stamp, you'll ink your image and stamp with it, and you want that image to dry really quickly, and then you move on. Well, a dye-based ink or a chalk-based ink is usually what you do that with. However, then after we're done with our C and our D, remember we went all the way down the line to P, pigment-based ink, and that is what I have for you today. So I'm gonna scooch those over and I'm gonna move that over. So I zinc has a beautiful collection of pigment-based inks. I wanna let you know we brought in just a small assortment. They have a huge collection of pigment-based inks. These inks here that I've got are metallics or metals. So how these dry with a flat look to them, these are gonna have a metallic look to them.
To obtain a metallic look in an ink, it almost always has to be pigment. I have never seen an ink that is metallic that is not pigment. That's not to say it doesn't exist. It just means I have never seen it. So all of these inks, because they have a metal finish to them, a metallic finish, need to be a pigment-based ink. Pigment-based ink doesn't absorb into your paper. Pigment-based ink sits on top of your paper and will slowly dry. Unlike these that are almost instantaneous, I mean almost instantaneous, these will not be. So let me take some of them and move them out of the way. Let's go with the purple. So here I did the purple memento and you saw how fast it dried. Now I have a purple metallic. You can even see that it's wet. Can you see that reflection? And if I take my finger It moves. Now I wasn't able to do that with the Memento because the Memento, Memento's a dye-based ink and it, it absorbed right in because it's so close to A in the alphabet. A, B, C, D. Dye is almost to the front of the alphabet so it dries super fast. This is a pigment-based ink and it takes it a whole lot longer. Let's grab the blue. Here's the Eye Zinc Blue Metallic, Blue Metal. pretty. Now it will dry. I can leave it like that and it will dry in time. It will just take longer than normal or I can take my finger and you can see. Now you can also see the metallic aspect of both of them. Where this one doesn't have anything, it's a flat color, you can see that sheen coming off of both purple, Aladdin's purple, Aladdin's blue, Memento's purple, Memento's blue. There's a big difference. Look at the sheen and the color. So, pigment-based ink takes longer to dry because it's so much further down on the alphabet. Why would you use a pigment-based ink? Well, maybe you want the metallic look and the only way you're gonna get that is with a pigment-based ink. Maybe you want to use embossing powder with it. Maybe you want to transfer a color. There's a lot of reasons why you would want to use a pigment-based ink over a dye-based ink. Absolutely. Now that I've kind of shown you the difference, I wanna show you um, on black paper. So, you see it on white, and you're like, okay, I kind of get that. But I think when you see it on black, it becomes far more, um, uh, uh, I don't want to say, I think the teachable moment there for you is, is, is uh, aha when you see me do it on black. So, let's take the blue from Aladdin in the pigment based. Okay, and let me take the purple. Okay, now they're wet. They're starting to dry. You can see it starting to dry, but they are wet. Now let me take the blue from Memento. Remember, right there. And let me take the purple from Memento. Ha! Ah, are you getting the... It, it, it absorbs right in. It doesn't sit... Now you can see how this sits on top where this, the color is absorbed right into the black. You don't see the blue. You don't see the purple. You can see that there's ink there, but you can't see the color. Here is the yellow from Hero Arts. 
Here's the peach from Hero Arts. Here's the ombre from Hero Arts. None of those colors, while well, you can see that I've stamped with them, you can see the colors there, none of the colors are actually visible to you because it is a dye-based ink and it seeps in, whereas a pigment-based ink stands on top. It will dry, but it will take more time. Can you see that metallic in there? So pretty. Now, Hero Arts also has done a metallic ink. Not a metallic, a pigment-based ink. And we carry it. It is in the full-size pads. I think they have nine colors. In fact, I'm just gonna turn this over and I'm gonna do the Hero Hues Amethyst, full-size pigment-based ink. So this color is going to sit on top because it's a pigment-based ink. There you go. There's the purple. Now let me show you the purple metallic from eyes ink. So they're both going to dry. This one is going to stay kind of muted in a dark purple. This one is going to kind of, is going to stay more vibrant in a metal finish. It'll have a kind of a bluey, shimmery, shiny to it versus the Hero Arts. Nothing wrong with the Hero Arts pigment-based ink. And like I said, we carry it in nine colors. It's a great pigment-based ink, but they do not make. Look at how beautiful that shimmer is on the, this is just, I don't know if the camera can get it, but my gosh, me looking at it, it's, this is stunning. This is nice, but it's flat, it's muted, it's toned down. This has got a little more pop and pizzazz to it. Both are pigment-based inks. Both you can use for the same purpose. Let's see if I did it on white. So let's take the Hero Arts. And then let's take the eye zinc. So a smaller pad, but I think that'll do it. So you can see the difference. Beautiful color, they call it amethyst. This has definitely got a metallic finish to it, a sheen to it that this one doesn't have. And what really matters is what do you want to use? What are you trying to achieve with your project? Do you, if you're stamping on white paper and you're not planning to emboss, do you need a pigment-based ink? No, you can just use a dye-based ink. But if you wanna do more with it, if you wanna use embossing powders with it of any kind, you're going to need a pigment-based ink. So, I think these run $8 or $8.99 a pad. Like I said, nine colors from Hero Arts, beautiful product, love it, we carry it, I sell it, I am confident in it and I stand behind it. The Aladine, smaller size pads, but $2.90 and then 20% off. So if you have never played with pigment-based inks and you want to play with them, or if you are, huh, I don't know how often I'm gonna use that color, but it sure is a pretty color and I really, really like this color. And for, let's see, 2.90 less 20%, that's like 60 cents off, so almost 60 cents off. So that would be $2.30. For $2.30, I'm happy to have this blue. That's a really pretty blue. I really like that blue. And it's $2.30. We brought in their metals to start with. These are all the pigments that have kind of a metallic finish to them. And I went ahead and did a quick color swatch for you so you could see them. Now I accidentally did this one twice, so just ignore that one. I did them on white so you can see the sheen and the shine. So the pink has kind of a purpley, almost a pinky, a pinky purple sheen to it. This is what they call red. 
up here they call this one yellow. I don't know. But and look at see look at that beautiful iridescence on that purple. And they're $2.90 and then on sale. But then look at them on black as well. And you can see that difference. And what's interesting is that the color changes based off of the paper that you're using it. Here, this is the red. Here's the red on black. Here's the pink on black. Here's the pink on white. The color changes based off of the color of the paper that you're using. But regardless, they all have that beautiful sheen and that beautiful shine that you only get with a pigment-based ink. And at the price, it's a really wonderful product. It just is. Do they have re-inkers? No. Their thought process is for three bucks, you just get a new one when they're gone. Are they loaded with ink? Yes, they are loaded with ink. So now understanding, see, look at it as it dries. It, it, this stays very vibrant and very metallic-y. And nothing wrong with the amethyst. It's a pretty color, but it's not quite, it's not quite what the eyes inks are. And then this one had all of those others on there. And you can see, you can see where I've stamped with it or inked with it, but no color comes through. There is a difference in ink. And if you know your ABCs, you can remember your CDP. Chalk closest to A dries the fastest. D is the next, the next letter in the alphabet. It's so close to C, it dries almost as fast as a chalk. But then between D and P is this long span of alphabet. Pigment takes the most time to dry. All right, I'm gonna move these out of the way for right now. I'm gonna move these out of the way for right now. And we're actually gonna start, I know that was a half an hour on ink, but I think it's important that you understand the difference between the inks before we play with inks. And that's what makes this a class and not a demo. It, it's, it, it, there is a difference. I could definitely do 15 minute demos and say, here, here it is and this is what I've done, but I don't know that you would actually understand why I did what I did or why I chose the products to use to make the finished whatever I'm doing. And that I think is, is equally as important. Sometimes it's more important to tell you what not to do than how, to, you know, how not to use the product than actually how to use the product. So today we're gonna be playing with, I'm gonna start with, gosh, where did it go? Oh, right here. I'm gonna start with a die and stamp set from Couture Creations, Ozzy Andrew. He makes these sets every so often. I really love them because they're very affordable. I want to say this one's on sale for $11.90. You get the stamp and you get four dies to go with it. Why four dies? Because each of those dies is going to line up to a portion of this stamp. And if you stamp this multiple times, you can die cut it each individual little piece to create a layered look really beautiful. They're really easy to use and I'm going to start there. So I'm going to put this and this right there. I've already got one on a block and this is a clear acrylic block. The stamp goes, stamp goes on, the stamp goes off, the stamp goes on, the stamp goes off and you just clean it. You can see that there's ink in there already. The pigment based ink does not harm your stamp at all. I've been cleaning up mine with baby wipes and I just get in there and scrub it. You can certainly use Dawn dishwashing de a detergent, palm olive. If you've got a stamp scrubber, you can get in there. The only thing I would not use is a solvent based um, cleaner, a solvent based cleaner to take care of this. If you are gonna do that, you need to be super quick with it because this, this can eat through the the plastic of the stamp so you don't want to leave a solvent based cleaner on a clear stamp solvent based cleaners work great on rubber stamps but they're able to take the the uh toughness from the solvent and not distort or harm the stamp so i just use a baby wipe whatever makes your heart happy okay so i'm going to grab some white paper And I 
think I'm going to grab... Hmm. Well, maybe we'll just mix it up a little bit. Nothing that I make is going to be perfect. It's not going to be... I'm just going to... We're going to play and I'm going to show. So can I get two? Ooh. Maybe by the hair of a chinny chin chin. Hmm. Well, okay, we're gonna go for it. Let's just play, I think I'll start, I'll just do one in, I'll use two colors. Maybe I like the the gold and the blue. I'll do some in gold and some in blue. Hmm, do I want, or maybe I want all gold. All right, let's just start with all gold. Okay, so I'm gonna ink up my stamp really good with my pigment-based ink. And this is a metallic gold. Many of you may already have a metallic gold pigment-based ink or a silver or a copper. What's nice is that they've got 11 different colors. <laughs> and at that price, you're not buying a full-size pad. All right, so I've got it inked up pretty good. And I'm going to do the I'm going to put it on top and do the little back massage. This is a big stamp and I want to make sure that I get the whole thing. If I miss some of it, is my life over? No, it will be fine even if I miss some of it, but I'm going to try not to. So instead of stamping down, I'm just going to give a back massage and try to get a really nice image. See, my hands are flat. That's important. Do not, you're not trying to go in there with your fingertips. If you go in with your fingertips, you tend to push down in areas that you've got ink on that base of the stamp and that's not what you want. If you use a flat hand, you're adding pressure all over. You're not missing any place and you're not forcing that paper to dip down. All right, let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm good. So I've got right there. Now, let's, and when I say dip down, I mean I don't want the paper to touch down in here. I only want the paper to stay up so it hits the lines, the outlines of the stamp. I don't want it to go so far down that I get some of that gold in my open flowers. Pretty gold. Okay, so let me do it again. and ink it up really good. And this time before I turn it over, I'm gonna see where the stamp lands. Ooh, that's by a hair of a chinny chin chin. So I'm gonna take the stamp off a little bit. So I'm not gonna get my entire flower. I've got a little bit of my stamp hanging over the edge, but I'm gonna be okay with that. And a really nice back rub. And let's see what I got. That's good, a little bit of a double image because I flipped it, but I'm gonna be okay with that too. And then I think I'll do it one more time. And ink, 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 ink. And stamp. So this stamp can take four stamps to get one image. But since you're just working on white paper and you don't need the full stamp for each, you will see what I'm talking about when we get there. Okay, you think I'm good? Yeah, okay, good, awesome. So all I've done right now is stamp with pigment-based ink. 
And I want to add a little bit of extra to this. And the way I'm gonna do that is with Stampendous Embossing Powder. This is their Sparkle Embossing Powder. And I like it because it adds zing without adding zing. <laughs> it adds glitter without adding glitter. And actually my favorite color, one of my favorite colors in here is called, I think this is called either Winter Wonderland or Stardust. I like the two of them. It's kind of a color without color. It looks a little white, a little gray in here, but when you see what it does, it's absolutely beautiful. While these are still wet, I can take and put embossing powder on them. And I tend to dump, and I don't really care whether I get embossing powder over the entire flower or not. I'm not trying to be glitter. I'm trying to be glitter. <laughs> I'm not trying to be, oh ho, in your face glitter. I'm trying to be subtle. Oh, isn't that pretty in your face glitter? Now, if this was dye-based ink, of course I couldn't put embossing powder over it because dye-based ink dries like that. It won't stay wet long enough for me to add my embossing powder. A little too close to the edge. Now I'm just gonna gather it all up. All I do is tap my fingers underneath and gather it all up. So then I can put it all back in here. And then put that back in my little tub. So the thing about embossing powder is a little bit goes a long way. Fill my tub right back on up. All right, good. Put my lid on. Now, did I have to use embossing powder? Absolutely not. But I wanted to add a little bit of zing to my flowers. I don't know if you can see it. Now, right now, that embossing powder is just that. It is a powder. You saw me use it. It is a powder. And if I were to take some other inks and put other inks on top of this right now, it would wipe that powder right off because it hasn't been set. How do you set embossing powder? You use a heat tool. It is not a blow dryer. I know some of you use a Wagner paint stripper. God bless you, I'd burn myself. <laughs> but this is, this is the Sizzix brand. We like the Sizzix brand very much. I was very, I, I, I like it because it has the two speeds. It works faster than the Ranger tool, but it still doesn't burn your paper and I am able to get right down on top. So when I use this, I'm going to take um, and put heat. Again, a blow dryer will not be hot enough to get this done, nor do you wanna use this on your hair. You will singe your hair pretty quickly. But this is going to add enough heat to take that embossing powder and change it from a powder into a solid. Why? Because embossing powder is just a form of a plastic that has been ground down so fine. But when you add heat, it melts. And as it's going, I can see it turning. I can literally watch it go from a powder to a solid, and I can see the little sparkles as they melt into a solid kind of wink at you. And I just want to take my time and go over the whole thing. I don't do this. 
A lot of people will do this. By doing that, you're taking, you're taking heat. If you're doing this, you're taking heat from here and moving it over there and then back over here and then back over there. And every time you take the heat off your paper, it's immediately starting to cool down. You want to let that heat stay there until that powder changes into a solid. Okay, I think I'm pretty good. Now, if I did not get all of, if I didn't hit heat everywhere and some of the swipes away, I'm gonna be okay with that. Why? Because I stamped with a colored ink first. Could have I had done this with a Versamark? Yes, absolutely. I could have taken my Versamark and inked up my, my stamp and put it down. But if I did that, and then I put that beautiful soft embossing powder, you would not have that gold underneath it. And you're like, okay, well then just use a gold embossing powder, a gold, a gold glitter embossing powder. Absolutely you can. Same thing, if I stamped with my Versamark, which is an embossing medium, it's a clear medium that lets you stamp and then throw embossing powder over the top of it and do what I just did. But let's say I didn't heat the whole thing. And when I go to do something, ooh, go to, I say, I just put my finger in that one. I go to do something with it. After I heat it, it's, the embossing powder wipes away. Let's say I missed a whole section over here using Versamark. At that point, you have to restamp on top or start again. But if you start with a color and you're adding just a little touch of glitter and somewhere you didn't get the heat exactly right and it wipes off, that's okay. Nobody is ever going to notice because you're not going to have that blank space here, that empty where they're just gone. Now, I've gone ahead and I've, this one's all done. The glitter is on there permanently. This one is not. So I still have to heat. And you can see the difference. This one is a little more faded, a little more subdued, while this one's a little more vibrant, a little bit happier. And I'm talking about the color of the gold in the flowers. One's a little darker, one's a little deeper, this one's a little darker and deeper, this one's a little more subdued because it has got that powder laying on top of it and until you melt it, it looks like there's almost like a little film over your ink. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. Because if I don't get everywhere, I'm okay with that. Because ultimately, I'm going to die cut it. And it's got that color, the gold already there. And I just want a wink of glitter. So now, anywhere my embossing heat tool did not hit, that powder has been wiped off. I just want a wink of glitter. I don't want bam, I want, oh, <laughs> I want subtle. And then my very last one, let's do this one super quick too. So I don't know if I hit every place. No, I think some of, yeah, I wiped off some of it, but I'm okay with that. Hopefully you can see the glitter and it's twinkling. So now I have three flowers and you're like, well, why do you need three flowers? This is where the dyes come in. So I have my first die and I try to find a, a point on here 
on my flower where I can also find a reference point here. And I did this. This flower seems to have a flat side. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but you've got one side that's kind of flat and this side's really roundy. Can you see how this one's really roundy and this one's flat? Well, I'm able to find that flat with two M's. I've got two mountains and a flat. And I'm able to find that on my flower pretty darn easily. There's my, my flat side and my two mountains because I want to die cut that out. But then why do I need these two? Well, then you've got the next die down and I can find mm -hmm. uh, So this one's got the one that goes that way, one that goes zoop, it's like a mountain slope. And there it is. So now I can cut just this piece out. And then my next one. Remember, you get four dies. And this one's gonna go somewhere in the middle here. And you just kinda have to move it around and figure out, figure out where it goes. Looks like it goes right there. So each one of these, I didn't need to do the whole flower, I did it anyway, but each one of these is going to let me cut out a different element from the flower so I can layer them on top of my base. That is why they give you, and then there's the other little one that fits right in here to give you that very last fourth layer. That is why you get four dies with the one stamp set. You have to stamp it multiple times. And agreed, when I cut this out, I'm gonna cut out all of this around it. It doesn't matter. When I cut out the, the smallest one, or the next smallest, I only care about what's in the die cut. All of this is gonna get tossed or thrown away. But before I cut, I want to color. And again, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use a pigment-based ink. And the reason I'm gonna use a pigment-based ink is because I want to go ahead and blend. I wouldn't be able to take my memento and I would have to use either um, a blending tool, a brush to go in there. But if I were to try and go in there with something like a finger dauber, I'm not going to be able to blend multiple colors. And I want to blend multiple colors. If you have the, the nicer um, makeup brushes, you are able to do a little bit more blending with like a memento or any dye based ink. But if you're working with makeup sponges or little finger daubers, a pigment-based ink is gonna be much more your friend. So, the only other thing we brought in from Aladdin, and mind you, they have a lot of eye zinc pigments. We had to pare it down, and we'll eventually bring in the whole collection. We brought in one kit of colors because these colors worked so perfectly with the Stampendous embossing powders, the sparkly embossing powders. They were like two peas in a pod. You'd almost think the same company did both of them. The inks are pigment inks from Aladdin. The embossing powders are from Stampendous. So I'm gonna take my inks and I'm gonna start maybe with a yellow, maybe a yellow and maybe, I don't know, a red. Okay, I'm going to do yellow and red. And because these inks are wet and because they don't dry as fast, they let you blend on just basic cardstock. All this is is 100 pound cardstock. I would not be able to do that with a memento ink without having those pretty blending brushes. Also, I like that I can put the little lids right underneath them. That made my heart happy because when I ask you what I did with the lid, tell me, it's just, it's underneath, Stacy. You didn't lose it, it's right there. That made my heart so happy. So I'm gonna start with some yellow and I've just got a finger dauber. And I'm gonna kinda add a little bit of yellow and I'm just gonna be willy-nilly. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time thinking 
quite often my thinking is overrated. Do not tell Mr. SMS I said that. <laughs> I'm just gonna add some yellow. Okay, I'm good. And then I'm gonna add some red. And because the inks stay wet longer, I'm able to blend them right on my paper without anything special. I don't need any water. I'm not palette painting. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just blending my inks literally on my paper. And can you see how I'm going outside of the image? I'm going outside the image. I want you to go outside the image a little bit. Add some more red if I want. And come back in and just, so I really don't want to give a whole, a whole lot of thought. I just want to blend and have something pretty. It kind of looks like a hot mess right now. And you're saying, but Stacy, what happened to that beautiful embossing you did? Remember you put the gold down and then you put the, the pretty, just the kind of, these are, this color is twinkle. I guess I would have, it's a twinkle color. Unlike, um, let's say this one. This one definitely has of a, a copper look to it. And when you put it down, you'll have copper glitter. This one has a twinkle. That gray disappears into clear, and what's left is just the pretty, the pretty iridescent glitter to it. How am I going to get that back? Easy peasy. I'm going to take a paper towel. And while that ink is still wet, I'm just going to give it a wipe. And then all of a sudden, my pretty is back. Don't know if the camera can get it, but my pretty twinkle is back, my gold is back. Why? Embossing powder is a natural resist. It resists the ink. It doesn't want the ink, it doesn't like the ink. It's a plastic. So it's like, oh no, you're not gonna stick to me. Ooh, and you're saying, it still looks like a mess, Stacy. What are you trying to do? Okay, I get it. Let's bring over my die cutting machine. Let's grab the biggest one. Let's bring over my Sizzix machine. And let me find my flat with my mountains. There's, there's my flat. That is definitely my flat and those are definitely my mountains. Yep, flat with mountains. Okay, and I'm on my magnetic platform that um, goes with your Sizzix machine. It does not come with a Sizzix Big Shot machine. It is sold separately, but that's what I'm using today so that I can try and line it up as best as possible. Put my top plate over it. So I've got a Sizzix magnetic platform, a cut plate, my paper, my die, and then a do not cut plate on top and I'm gonna send it on through. And because this is an open frame die, it literally is a one roll die. You don't have to go back and forth. You don't have to rotate. You can't get a much simpler die than this. And bam, there's my flower. Now, why did I tell you to cut or to color a little bit outside the lines? Because if you look, right up there. 
Can you see I didn't cut exactly on the line? Somewhere in this vicinity. But because I inked outside, it doesn't matter. Nobody ever gonna know. But if you don't ink outside the lines, all that would have been white. And anywhere where I was a little off on my cut, you would see white paper. And we don't want that. We don't want that. We want a pretty flower. And look at how pretty is this. And it's, oh, I hope this comes up on camera. I can never tell what you're seeing. So I think it's just beautiful. But we have the other two. We have the other two. And I could go in and I could color them. But to show you, here's my number two. Uh, and let's see, where's my, where's my steep mountain? Where's my, oh, there's my steep mountain. Okay, so I see on my die I've got, I've got one that is a really like a steep mountain. Then I go find the same steep mountain on my paper. And I am going to line it up. And then my next size down. And let's see, I've got a big one here. Let's see if that's it. Oh, that one's not it. Maybe this one. So let's just, oh, is that it? I think that's, by George, I got it. So normally I would color these so that they they match, but I just want to cut them so you can see. Oh, that one's going to want to move. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can lock them in place. And again, I would have colored outside the lines So that when I cut, there's no chance of any white paper. Now, can you go back and fix it after you've cut it? If there's, oh, I don't want to move it. I just moved it. Oh, come on, get in there. Nope, I moved it. Okay, well, we'll just line it back up again. Drat. Okay, where's my, where's my steep one right there? Okay, please don't move. Should have lined it up on here in the first place, but that's okay. And it wants to move. All right. Just do it. Let it be and just go. Oh, but it's really off. What's the worst that can happen? It's only paper. <laughs> that can happen. All right, I'm not gonna try and cut two at the same time. <laughs> what can happen? Oh, just that. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut one, one and then one. <laughs> For it only being paper, I sure did care a lot, didn't I? <laughs> oh, come on. See, and I moved it again, Stacy. Plates are straight. Okay, I'm going. We're going. I'm over it. Done and done. There's one. Bam. Bring this up. Let's get the second one done and done.
that's good. Think long, think wrong. I should take my own advice and through. See, I just should have thrown them on there to begin with and been done. So, I can now, had I colored this one, I can now layer it. Where's my ski slope? There's my ski slope. I can layer it on top and pop. And then I can layer it on top and pop and create a beautiful three-dimensional flower. Can I color it after the fact? Sure, I can. It's fine. It, I'm, I just find it easier to have the extra white around me to make my mess. But sure, I can color it. And if I wanted to, could I use just two flowers yes i could i could cut i could alternate my cuts and then they my flowers would have holes in them but you would never see the holes because well you would have cut from the base you would have cut also flower number three and from flower number two you would have cut flower two and four nobody would ever see the holes because the the larger size flower on top of it will disappear. But if that's too much work and too much effort, I get it. Just cut them individually. It's only white paper. That's it, it's only white paper. And you can see I'm just kind of schmooze, schmooze, schmooze. Blend my color. And when I'm done, take my paper towel, wipe, wipe, wipe. And all my pretty glitter comes back into play. And then I can layer it. There's my, I can layer it on top and start to pop and you just build your layers it's a very simple dye to use it's a very effective flower you could absolutely go in there and start tattering it and scrunching it and rolling it and tweaking it so that it has even a more dimensional look to it and you just layer for eleven dollars i think in 90 cents is what it is it's a value getting all those dyes with one really big stamp that allows you to either use the stamp all on its own, use the stamp with a die, or use the stamp and the die and pop and layer. Really, really nice. That's using the metallics. Let's wipe this off. What if I wanted to use just the, the um, the primary colors that I have over here, the non-metal colors. Baby wipe, I'm just going in there and scrubbing this out. Let's put this aside for now. Baby wipe, go in there and scrub this out. And let's use some colors that don't necessarily go together. <laughs> Just so you can see. All right, so I've scrubbed that out. This time I'm only going to use just the primary color set that we have for you. So pretty. Um, I think I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use the pink to stamp with. Hmm. <laughs> Pink. Blue. No, I'll use the pink. Hmm. Pink. Blue. Maybe I'll use this blue. This one's really light and pretty. So, ink up. Now, this doesn't have the metallic to it.
but see how juicy it is? And because it's a pigment, it's going to stay wet longer. Now this one, I'm just gonna do one. I'm not gonna layer it. And you saw how I layered. This time I'm just gonna do the one. I'm gonna put it on, give a nice back rub. I think I'm good. Do you think I'm good? Oh yeah, that looks good, right? Well done, you. Thank you. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come over and remember how I said these colors were so perfect with this kit? They really, really, really are. I mean, they're just like, it was just like meant for each other. I'm gonna take this super beautiful blue. And again, it's embossing powder, super beautiful blue. I'm bring this over. I'm gonna put my blue on it. And because I have a blue base, it's just gonna twinkle. It's not gonna be too much. It's not gonna be too little. It's just gonna be a little twinkle. Okay, let's put my blue away. A little goes a really long way, which is why I'm glad Stampend just put these kits together. Originally, they put these kits together for me. I don't know if this is available from them yet to anybody else, but originally these kits um, were done just for scrapbooking made simple. Okay, so I've got a little bit of glitter on there in the blue, but it doesn't scream blue. It just accents on that blue pretty um, ink. And maybe this isn't your most favorite blue, but maybe you want to use a blue every now and then. And I'm just going to heat. And if I don't get it all, if I don't turn all my embossing powder into a solid, I'm okay with that because I have that underlying blue ink to fill in the gap so it doesn't, there's no empty spaces. And the blue embossing powder, glitter embossing powder, it's not an opaque embossing powder. It's not that I'm putting that color on top and it's obscuring the ink. That's what the, the embossing powders are so pretty because they formulated them to where they have the translucency to them that you still will see the ink underneath. See how close I'm getting to it? Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm done. And then give it a second to dry. Just when I say dry, I mean cool down. Once your paper is cool, you're good to go. Oh yeah. So you've got that pretty blue under there. Just adding that little bit of glitter element to it, but not so much glitter that you're like, oh, because maybe you just need a soft glitter. Maybe you just want it to pop a little bit. Now let's add some ink. So I'm gonna bring back, I'm gonna bring over my pink and my yellow is what I'm gonna use this time. And I always start with a little bit of yellow. And I'm really not being too mindful of where I'm putting it. And I'm not pushing down too hard. Some places it's gonna be darker, some places it's gonna be lighter. I'm okay with that because then I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab my pink, put 
got my little lid right under there and my little lid right under there. Wah ha ha ha, I'm not gonna lose them. And let's add some pinks. And then I will go back with my yellow to blend. Just want a little pink. And then I'll go back with my yellow to blend. I want a little more pink. I can come in and add. All right, I think we're gonna try that. And then to get my blue sparkly back, because right now it just looks like a mess. To get my blue sparkly back, Take my paper towel Ooh, it's so pretty <laughs> I love it okay it still looks like a hot mess I know let's die cut it and then it will look Ooh, I hope we'll see Okay, let me find my flat space. There's my flat space and my my M and my M in a flat space. So let me get my die. There's my flat space and my M and my M. Oh, perfect. Happy day. And I went outside my lines a little bit. That way if I don't line this up perfectly, I'm not gonna cry. No crying in scrapbooking or crafting. Well, I'm just gonna go. Last time I worried about it too much. Oh, no you don't. You rethink that camera. Did you hear my stabilizer thinking that it was going to go off? Okay. Oh, I like it. It's so pretty. And it's got the little glitteries going on, but not too much glittery. And if you wanted, could you go back and add more color? Yes, of course, you can always add color. That's never the problem. Just add some color right around the edges of more pink if that's what I want. And I'm doing just around the edges. Lovely. Really looks good. I like it with the blue. And then you can decorate and make your card or whatever you're going to do. You've got options. You could do more and you could layer them. I could take that one and just do some pink through it and layer this one. This one's got the gold. So I could put the gold on top of the blue. It's not a problem. It's good to go. It's good to mix. It's good to match. Experiment. Try. Play. Put the pink on there and the... and. and, and and it just it just pops it up easy to do and this time all I used was the kit the pigment based inks so it's nice to get a collection that gives you a nice representation of every color we're only doing this in the kit we're not doing them open stock 
when we bring in everything we'll do open stock but my goodness I want to say they have like 30 colors 40 colors so I brought in the kit that I gosh I don't know is it like it's like $19.99 less 20% so that would be uh, $16 I think for the kit uh, roughly around somewhere in that range for the nine colors and that gives you a nice selection if you don't have any and pigment based ink might not be the ink that you want to go to all the time now we're going to move on i'm going to put this flower away and remember we did i've got a couple samples so i did this one i was playing with this one played around with that one and i played around with that one and i actually built this one so i built it all the way up and this one i did the cut out of the center so to make this one work eeks out of my die one I cut my die three also and out of my die two I cut the smallest little one that sits on top and when you put them together nobody's going to know that there's holes because they're all gonna get covered up. And then I just put two pieces of Stacy tape along the back to keep it all together. And this time by doing this, I only had to cut two. I got all four layers out of just stamping two. So I used the die number one, the base die, with die number three, and die number two with die number four. And I was able to layer without anybody knowing I had cut out the centers. They don't need to know. Don't tell them. Saves you a piece of paper. Okay, so we're gonna move on, and then we're, we're gonna move on to the product that unfortunately Ozzy Andrew didn't have for me to bring to you, so I pulled from my own stash. So these are actually hot foil plates that I did a couple years ago. And if you have a GoPress and foil, a Glimmer machine, or a Gemini machine, all of my hot foil plates are gonna work within those. And that's a whole, hot foiling is, is you know, you heat it up and then you send it through your big shot machine. This is not a laminating type of hot foil. These are actually hot foil plates, they're metal. But what makes these different is that these are cut in foil. So you're able to cut this shape at the exact time you're foiling it, which made it really, really nice. But if you use the right type of ink, you also can do a beautiful transfer. Now let's start maybe just with the, let's start with the hummingbird. And with the hummingbird, I'm just gonna do straight color. I'm not gonna do any kind of embossing glitter at all. I'm gonna do just straight color. So let me bring my colors back over. And let me grab my bird. I don't need this anymore and I'm going to color my bird with my daubers and I'm just going to use the Ising pigment based inks and no extra embossing powder or anything and because I'm me I always start with a yellow yellow is just my nice base color and it allows me to be sure that, um, that there's no place that doesn't have color. Just in case I miss a spot with one of my other colors, I know that at the very minimum, the bird will have yellow, <laughs> my hummingbird. And again, this is not what this die was meant for. This die is meant to do a hot foil plate and a hot foil transfer using a GoPress and foil machine and your Sizzix Big Shot machine or your die cutting machine. You can absolutely use it with your Glimmer or your Gemini machine too. Now, let's see. Let's take maybe a little bit of my green. And because the ink stays wet long enough, I can then go in and start layering colors in. And because it's a pigment-based ink, it doesn't bead up on the metal. And then maybe some... 
maybe some pink. Let's do some wings in pink. Oh, got a little bit of a something on there. And maybe some blue. And all I'm doing is layering color on top of him. I don't know, all we can do is try. It's only paper. If I don't like it, the only the, the worst I've done is wasted some paper. I got plenty of ink. So let's give him a whirl. He is thin. So I can use my big shot machine with my platform completely closed or on my magnetic plate. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put my do not cut plate down first because this time I'm gonna cut up. So I'm gonna have that color up. And what's nice is he sticks right to that magnetic platform. And then I'm gonna put my paper on top of him. And then my cut plate. I always have a do not cut plate going. I never cut without it. And the do not cut plate goes on whatever side your die is not cutting into. What it does is having a do not cut plate, and they don't sell one, it's not called a do not cut plate. I just named it that because I was the first one to, to do that, <laughs> to have a do not cut plate. It allows you to send your, your sandwich through your machine, no matter what machine you own, and it goes through easier because the plates will eventually warp. And if you're working with two plates that are warped, Trying to fit it into the machine can be a little difficult, but if you always have a do not cut plate, you know it's always going to slide so much easier. And it doesn't matter what machine you have, you should always try and have a do not cut plate. And that means you're just gonna get a plate that you never ever cut into. If you accidentally cut into it like I do every now and then, it's okay, don't worry about it, not the end of the world. Okay, so here's my bird. Now can you see, all the ink has been taken off of those high points because those high points have now transferred the ink. To my paper. And there's my hummingbird. Easy to do. You saw how easy it was to do that. I just took those pigment based inks and blended them literally and I just went hodgepodge I just put it all over put it through and there you go yay and because it, it's not a dye based ink the ink doesn't um, bead up on the metal sometimes a dye based ink will bead up on the metal your pigment based ink will not do we like are we happy are we wahoo kachu? How many um how many foil plates do you own that now you can use it in a totally different way? And this is a cut in foil, so you're cutting at the exact same time, and now you're just transferring my the ink. How do you clean them? Your choice. Uh, you can take a little bit of alcohol. Well, you can use a baby wipe. You don't have to do anything more than that, actually, because that ink is not going to dry on that metal. Take a baby wipe and get it out. You can also take a little bit of alcohol. Choop. and get it that way. Whichever way makes your heart happy, but baby wipe works just fine. Now, in that same release, I also did flowers. Oh, I wonder what the butterfly would look like. Huh. Oh. What if we did the... Oh, 
gosh, what if we did the the green? Let's do the green really quick on black before I do the flower. Let's get the green out. And this time, let's use the pigment based. So let's put let's put the green first. So there's two different greens in the metals. And I think I'm going to use both of them. Oh, don't you start. I hear you. Stop. Thank you. So let's add some green. And then this is the other green. Throw a little bit of that on top of it, too. I have no idea what this is going to look like. And then for good measure, let's just throw a little bit of the, what is this? Is this a copper? Copper, bronze? Yeah, copper. Okay, it might be a hot mess. Nobody knows until you try. And all it is is paper. Although I do like my hummingbird. My hummingbird came out cute. Let's lift it up. Gently bring my machine back over so that hopefully my stabilizer. I'm going to cut facing up just because I want to see where the die is because it's got ink on it. I want to make sure my paper covers the whole thing going to dye and transfer that ink at the same time, but I have no idea what we're going to get. All right. Ooh. Okay, I'm digging on that. Hello. How pretty is that? You need something for fall? A corner for fall on your card? Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So pretty. You would never ever get that with a pig or with a dye based ink. You just can't or a chalk based ink. Will not happen. Look at the metallic coming through. Oh, happy day. Okay, I'm I love this. I do, I do, I do. Let's play with the um gosh, I want to play with all of these now. I should have started with this. Let's play with the flowers. Okay, so I've got a couple flowers and they're layering flowers. Two, three, four. And maybe just for the heck of it, no, I'm not gonna do that. I was gonna do it just on top of there. So these flowers have very thin lines and it's a cut, it's a cut and foil. This is a foiling die. That's what it was made for, to transfer foil. But I'm gonna do it with my inks. And what if I did, what if I did purples? If I did purple, and this is the non-metallic. Actually, I can probably just ink it up. I don't need to use a dauber, unless I want to blend color. Let's just ink it. So maybe I just want to do them all one color. And then let's grab that green, the metallic green, and let's do the stem in a metallic. Okay, so let's grab some white paper. No, not enough. Let's grab a bigger piece of white paper. Plenty. Let's bring my machine kind of close by and let's lift these up. 
and just drop them oh, drop them right on my drop them right on my cup plate or my do not cut plate sorry you can hear them cinching down got my finger on that one and last but not least okay so i've got them all on my do not cut plate I'm just going to put my paper over it and we'll see what we get and send it on through and it's going to transfer that ink at the same time it's going to cut the flowers out. transfer gosh it makes my heart happy oh and then there's my stem but it's got the metallic going on and let's get my little guy out of there come on little guy there we go okay so they're nice now they look they look beautiful but you can see it left all that ink in there none of that ink transferred it only transferred the ink on the highest points of the die where it cuts. But now I want to make it even more. So let's bring out my pretty purple, soft purple embossing powder. And I can just, I can just shake, 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 shake. And it's only going to adhere to the lines of the flower. It's only going to adhere where that where that ink is because it's a pigment based ink. It's wet long enough for me to add a little bit of my embossing powder. So pretty. And then I can tap, tap, tap. I've got a little piece of paper in there I don't want. And then I can put it all away. And wait until I need it again. And then bring my Bring my heat tool on over. And turn that powder into a solid. And in no time at all. It's so pretty. And it's just the slightest colors of, of glitter. And then I can come in and I can start to tweak and build and mold. And I didn't use foil at all. Now you can, you can do the same thing. You can foil it and then build your flowers. What if you just wanted to play with the inks and glitters and embossing powders? And just like that, I've made a beautiful little flower and I've got my little, I've got my little 
stem. Look at that. Let's put them together. Do I have some glue dots somewhere here? Oh, I do have some glue dots. Okay. So my quarter inch glue dots are purple. My micro glue dots are yellow and my big ones are red. I do that because I can't see anymore. So when I did my simply defined glue dots, I had them done in colors so that I didn't have to guess, is the glue dot actually there? I can just get it down and pop this one right on top and get another one and I can see what I'm doing, which makes my heart happy. And pop it right on top. And poof, just like that. I've built my flowers. Should I have this one more to the, yeah, more to the side, just like that. And then I can pop this one along the back and I've got a beautiful flower going. And all I used was ink, ink, my embossing powder with glitter in it, but it's not glitter, glitter, it's glitter, glitter. <laughs> Love it. So pretty, and then I can I can still rough them up a little bit. I could have colored them. You have options, lots and lots of options with these things. Pretty things that can be done easily with things you might you know, tools you might already have. Interesting way of using product you already own. And this is an older release of mine. Okay, so what did we do today? Holy smokes, we did a lot. We first started talking about the CDPs of ink and what dries fastest and what you can use on white paper versus what you can use on black paper. And the difference between a metallic-y looking versus a standard. I mean, both are beautiful colors. This is the Aladdin with the, the metals finish and this is the Hero Arts pigment amethyst. Both beautiful colors, but totally different. You can see the sheen on this one. So we talked about CDPs. If you know your ABCs, then you will never forget your CDPs and that's the order of ink and how they dry. Then we went in and we played. We played with Ozzy Andrews um, die that allows you to stamp and layer and cut and make beautiful, beautiful finished uh, flowers that again, you can tweak and you can curl and you can um, grunge up if you want to. But we stamped it with a pigment-based ink so we could then throw on a very subtle glitter accent to it with our embossing powder. And they just come out so pretty. We talked about how if you color outside the lines and you don't line your dye up perfectly, it's okay because there's no white out there for somebody to go, huh, you didn't line that up too good, did you? Because I'm the queen of not lining up too good. But if I color outside my lines, it's it's okay. So this is a new set from Ozzy Andrew and they are limited. I asked him, I said, can't you give me any more than that? And he said, no, you've taken all we've got. So I got all he has. And then we talked, well, and then we talked about using a cut and foil or a foiling die as a ink transfer and how beautiful they are. And that is how these flowers were made with the pigment based ink and the beautiful glitter embossing powder from Stampendous. All of this is achievable. All of this is achievable. What did we use? White paper. That's what we used and some black paper and some ink. 
and an embossing powder. If you're a beginning crafter, you can do this. It is achievable. You are gonna sit down and you're gonna give yourself permission to play. If you're the most experienced crafter, remember why you have some of this stuff and how to use it in a way that you maybe forgot about or didn't know about. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me show you what's on sale. Okay, first off, we've got the Aladdin inks. Now, the metals do not come in a pre-made kit. So we've made our own I Want It All kit for the Aladdin Eyes Ink inks. So the metals, you can do an I Want It All if you wanted all of them. Like I said, they're $2.90 each, which makes them really affordable because then they're 20% off and you can have all of the metal colors. I don't know why they call this yellow. It is not, I mean, would you call, would you call that yellow? I don't know, maybe on black it's yellow. But on white, it's pretty, I don't know. Anyway, they call it yellow. So when you get it and you see it's orange, I told you. But it's not really orange on the paper. So there's an I want it all on these or the metals you can buy just one or two colors if all you want is that beautiful purple or the gorgeous blue. No problem, $2.90 less 20%. Then we did the kit on the basic colors. we did the kit so you're gonna get all nine colors for whatever price it's on sale for and it's also at a YouTube yummy price and yes you saw that I mixed the two the metals and the basics together then we have from Ozzy Andrew we have the four items that make up this cute little collection we have the stamp in the die that I was working with all day today comes as a complete unit here it is all pretty and packaged. Then we have the coordinating dies to go with it, of the beautiful little flowers to go with it. We have the ephemera that goes with the collection. And you'll see a lot of this in the samples the girls made. And then we've got the six by six paper pad. So we did an I want it all if you wanted all four of the items. And of course they're on sale. And then we also did them open stock if you just wanted the paper and the dye or just the dye or just the ephemera. It's up to you, whatever you want. Or maybe you don't need any of it and don't like any of it and that's okay too. Then we did from Stampendous the sparkly embossing powder. We've had this before, you may already own it. And we did I, the, my favorite color down here. We also did it in a full size jar. So if you just wanted that full size jar of that beautiful um, kind of transparency all over glittery color loved it but if you like all the colors to go with all of those pigments this is a winner winner chicken dinner and it's also on sale and then last but not least I have clearanced out what's left of my collection of dyes hot foil dyes that we are using so that's a layering flower there's the butterflies that's a layering flower that's a layering flower. I've got, I think, four different flowers, three different flowers. I've got words that you could do the same way. You could ink them up and send them through. I did the, the pretty hummingbird. The butterflies look great. And then this one's a little bit more on the price because it's a much bigger die. You get the gate, you get both corners, but it's also on clearance. So that's what we got on sale for you. Now let's get to the samples. Yay! Okay, so this one was done with just the paper and the ephemera from Couture Creations. There is no, what's in there? There's no foil or no inking at all. Pretty though. And this one was made with just the paper from Couture Creations. And here we have one with the flowers and the paper and the glitter and the... And here I showed you this one to begin with. This one's got the pretty die that goes with the set. My dies, the ephemera and the paper. 
And here we have one with the small hummingbird, all done with his paper. And here we have beautiful card. That's yummy. And look at the flowers on that. Just yummy. And here we have with the butterflies and the ephemera and uh, and the the dyes that cut and and my butter it's just lovely the girls did a great job and here we have just one using his paper and the ephemera and here we have a watercolor look where the ink was put down and then a wet stamp on top of it to pull the color up or a lift off if you want. And then how beautiful and simple is this? How elegant is that? So pretty, so simple, so soft with just a touch of glitter on that flower just to make it come alive. Just a touch. And then here we have with the big flower. And with a whole little garden going on here. And with the gate, oh, she cut a circle out. With the gate and the hummingbird and the corner. All right. So that's it for today. Do not forget to post your comment about what you think is in my mom's safety deposit box. Time will tell. When I know, you'll know. If there's anything here that you love, 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 remember if you're local, you are welcome to email us at curbside at scrapbookingmadesimple.com to place your order. You can only order items that are in this YouTube current. So if you are not watching this during the current week that all of this is on sale, you can't order it, the sale's already over. So go to the YouTube Yummies category and if it's in there, please, you can email us at curbside at scrapbookingmadesimple.com with your order. If we haven't sold out of it already, we will, we will, either way, we call you back and get you all arranged. And that way you can come get your items um, at the time we allot for you. And if you see anything you like here, of course, you're willing, you're, there's always scrapbookingmadesimple.com if you're not local. And again, look under the YouTube Yummies category. That's where all of this product is. If you are lucky enough to have a local independent retailer who has the Stampendous Embossing Powder or the iZinc uh, Pigments or shop with them, please shop with them. We love you as customers and we absolutely appreciate you as a customer, but we also want to keep small business going. The... Simply Defined product is only with me and the Couture Creations you can only find with me. We're doing the worldwide launch on it for Andrew. So those products come shop with us for, but if you've got a local independent retailer who can get you some of these other things, you will not hurt my feelings, not even this much. I want you to support those people. I want you to support those shops and those creativity um, driving businesses that really are, you know, they've, they've been there for all of us, so let's be there for them. Okay, it is me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you all next week. Bye!